So first things first, I want to go and select my default cube and delete that. That's like something that we just always do for whatever reason. Let's press shift A. Let's go to mesh, UV sphere. And this is the first object we're going to be starting off with, which will be the head. So before we get started in moving, I want to go to shade smooth and also shift D to duplicate this right click to cancel the movement. And with this duplicate, I'll just toggle it off for now because we're going to use that later on. So with the head here, what I want to do is go to scope mode, press one on the number pad to go to the front view and let's go to the top right section of the 3D viewport and let's go and select the X so we can toggle on our symmetry. Now whatever we do to one side happens to the other side. Now I'm going to be toggling between a few different brushes and the first one I always start off with is the grab brush and the hot key for that is G and um, to change your brush size we can go to the um, top left section and change the radius or if you want to see what you're doing you can press F on the keyboard and you can move your mouse to the left or right to change the size. So with that being done, I want to do a quick head shape with this. So I'm going to drag this downwards, grab the side and bring it down and out because we're doing a stylized character um, and we just want to have this shape. <laughs> Let's bring out the top of the head. Let's bring it down. Press three to go to the side view. And this is really important that we always see what we're doing because a lot of people, when you're new to, you know, 3D character development, they'll, you'll look at one view for the entire time instead of rotating around how we should. And with that being done, let's go with one, go back to the front view. Let's press R on the keyboard, which is the high key for voxel remesh. And we can see the voxels before we apply it. And let's choose something relatively low um, so we can still manipulate the shape without, you know, taking longer than we need to. So somewhere around here is fine. And to apply it, you want to press Control R. And now you see we have these facets, and we can just um, we can just smooth these out by pressing and holding Shift and drawing on our model. Now I want to start to use my um, draw brush to carve out some sections for the eyes and to do that I'll hold down control which does the opposite effect of the natural brush so we'll carve out some eyes we'll leave them nice and separated once we have that we can uh, hold down shift and kind of smooth it out slightly so it's not super drastic Switch back between our grab brush, press F to change the size, and I want to just bring this section in a little bit where the nose typically would be. And we'll bring the head, forehead down a bit, and we'll bring out the mouth. And if need be, we can you know further manipulate this. I want to add a little bit more geometry to this because it's super low right now. And with that done, I can control R to apply it. I'm going to use my clay strips brush and we want to build up some volume around where the mouth typically would be. We can smooth it out a little bit by holding shift and drawing. And what I'll do is switch to one of the most important brushes we're going to be using today. And that is, of course, the Draw Sharp brush. This is where, like, this is the brush I use when I want to get that detail that's really sharp. So let's, let's bring the section down here around the mouth. We don't want to add too much detail to it just yet. 
because we're just doing the general blackout of the head. Let's go back to object mode. Let's press Shift A to bring in another mesh and UV sphere. Press one to go to the front view. We'll select our sphere still. With the move tool, we'll just better position this to be where the eye should go. So we want these eyes to be relatively big because um, we want to capitalize on it. So let's press three to go to the side view, bring this forward a bit. And I want the eyes to be about this close. At this point, I'll go to the modifiers tab on the right and I'll add a, um, okay, let's not add a modifier yet. At this point, we'll just select the sphere. We'll shift D to duplicate it, right click to cancel the movement and we'll toggle it off. It's gonna be really important why we turn it off here in a second, but what I wanna do is, while I have this selected is press tab, go to vertice mode, select this entire ring here, and I just double clicked in between two vertices to select it. You may need to hold down control and select this area or hold down alt, depending on what version of Blender you're using. Now with that being done, I can press H to hide Hover over the top section and press L. Now I can press Alt H on the keyboard, hold down Alt and press H to unhide the hidden area. And with this top half selected, what I'm gonna do is press P and go to selection. And that's gonna separate these two models. Now let's go from object mode or edit mode back to object mode by pressing tab. Now what I can do is um, better shape the eyelids. So I'll use the rotate tool with the top eyelid selected and I'll rotate it on this red line here. About so. I'll grab the bottom one and I'll rotate that one even more than the top. And what I'll do with this is select either top or bottom, go to add modifiers and we'll add a solidify to this so we got some thickness. Let's drag it in to about here. Select it and press Ctrl C to copy this. And we're gonna hit this drop down and go to apply. So we're gonna apply that thickness. Select the other layer and we're gonna go to solidify. Solidify, select thickness and press Ctrl V to paste the attribute we just copied from the top one and now apply this. With this done, I also want to add a mirror modifier to both top and bottom and select the head. I don't want to apply this yet. I'm just bringing in a mirror modifier and not applying it just yet. With that done, what I can now do is go to that sphere we hid um, the second time, which is the eye, select it, press S to downscale, and we'll just bring it in to the eyelids. So it makes a little bit more sense. Now we can press R to rotate, type in 90, and press X to rotate in 90 degrees in the X axis, we'll, which we'll be want to get. Um, we can press tab to go to edit mode of this sphere. We can go to vertice mode. So one thing I do want to do while we're in vertice mode is toggle on proportional editing here at the top. Select this first dot here in the middle. And what we can do is press G and Y to grab and move it in the Y axis. And you can middle mouse scroll up or down to change how much of the area is affected around the selected point. So this looks good somewhere around here. And I want to build up on and capitalize this sharp corner here. So what I'll do is press the number two on the keyboard, not the number pad, but the keyboard, or you can go to the top left section and just select the edge mode here. And what I want to do is with this area selected, press control B and that's the high key to bevel. And we're going to middle mouse scroll up to add another subdivision. So somewhere around here, 
looks good. We can right click and go to Shade Smooth if we need to. We can also add a subdivision surface to this. With the eyelids, we're going to do something similar to how we just added that bevel. So we'll select one. Double click this edge to select the entire ring going around. And let's press forward slash so we can isolate this. And we'll do the same for the bottom. So we'll hold down shift and select this ring. And now we can press control B. And we'll bevel this out. And to unisolate this, just press forward slash once again. And we'll do the same for the bottom eyelid. So select it, go to edit mode, and now we can press forward slash, select this ring, and select the outer ring, control B. Tab to go back to object mode, forward slash to unisolate. Now we can add a subdivision surface to both top and bottom. We'll add two subdivisions. We'll apply this. Do the same to the top. Subdivision times two and apply. We're going to leave the mirror modifier here for now. Let's select uh, this eyeball. Let's toggle off our subdivision to this and let's add a couple more edge loops here. So let's control R, select in between two edges and we'll just drag this down. And we'll control R once again and we'll add another. Now we can mirror this eye. Select the eye drop tool, which is the mirror object and we're gonna select the head once again, now let's do some more work on this head here. So let's go back into scope mode once we have this selected. Use our grab brush. Let's further capitalize on this. Bring this in a little bit. Bring this mouth back just a little bit. Grab the bottom of the head. We do want to round this off so there's no facets here. Or no obvious facets, really. I'll grab out the bottom jaw just so we can flush this out so it doesn't look too round. We can add a little bit more subdivision to this as well. Let's use our clay strips brush to build up on some volume around the head so we can have some indication of there being a cranial section to store and house the brain. Knowing a little anatomy does help out when it comes to sculpting, just so you're not going in blindly and working off what you think is there versus what we know. And I can, or I may or may not add a nose to this. I wanna add a little bit more volume and build up around the mouth area as well. I'm gonna press R, add a lot more voxel resolution to this. Control R to apply it. Smooth out certain sections around the mouth so it's not super blatant that we just um, added a crazy amount of topology to our model. Let's use that grab brush and let's kind of bring this out a little bit. Cause I feel we just jumped right into the head with these eyeballs.
let's add a little bit of volume to support the eyebrow. So let's use our clay strips brush. We need a mouth. So what we'll do is use our draw sharp brush. Remember this gets that detail that we can't get with any other brush. Get those sharp lines. Fine, let's build up some area and volume around the cheek area. So let's use our clay strips just to build something really quick, smooth it out so it doesn't look too awkwardly placed. I do want to bring in the temporal section as well. Move this out. And just to give it that Disney Pixar style, um, I can I could always just give it a nose. Just for you know the sake of familiarity. Humans like to sympathize, empathize with things that closely resemble them. So maybe this might look better with a nose. So let's just go from scope mode to object mode once again shift a go to mesh uv sphere press one to go to the front view press s to downscale this and you can get a nice tiny nose going in here press three to go to side view i'm gonna use this move tool or we could just press g to grab to give it a nice little nose Let's right click, go to shade smooth, go from object mode back to scope mode. I do want to press R to add a little resolution to this. Control R to apply it. Toggle on symmetry so we don't have to repeat this more than once. Add something like this. Just give them a nice tiny nose. That's Bring in the sides here. I'll press I, which is the hot key, to go to the inflate brush, and we'll just inflate the front section and the side sections here. Bring this out a little bit, bring this down, and I will be switching over to my draw sharp brush and pressing F to downscale this. Holding down control, remember that's the opposite effect. And we don't wanna do that, we just wanna draw so we can get some nostril lines here or holes. We're not gonna give them ears because we don't want them to look too humanoid so something else I'll do while we have this here is rotate the eyes a little bit. So I'll just angle these just so they can look more bug-like instead of human. It gives it that more cartoony field. And I think this is a good place to end um, this video with the head. We'll continue in the next video.